Okay, so on to part two of our demo. Now we need to move on into the body of our newsletter. So I'm going to click on the end of line two here, issue 27, and I'm going to hit enter. Now you can see if I just continue to hit enter and start typing text, that border line is going to continue to drop um, with my text. So that doesn't make much sense at this point, but to kind of go, I call this going through the gate or passing through the gate so we can get past that border line. I want to get my insertion point so it's below that border line. I can do that by going up here to my font group and clicking on clear all formatting and that jumps my insertion point beyond the border line so now I'm free to start typing stuff down into my document. And just as a precaution for now I'm going to click on my normal style just again to make sure that I'm back to where I started from. But here I'm going to start creating a heading for my the body of my newsletter. My formatting marks, of course, are still showing. I'm going to select Heading 1 up here for my style. Okay. I do want to decrease the font size, though, from 16 down to 12. I'm going to change that to bold, like so. And I want to update the heading style so it reflects those changes. So I'm going to right click on my heading style and say update heading 1 to match selection. Now I don't have any text there but that's my current formatting. And that's what my new heading 1 is going to look like. Alright. And I'm going to type in some text here. That was quick typing. And I'm going to go here and change my spacing before. I'm going to go to my layout tab. I'm going to say I want spacing before of 18 spacing after of 12 just to add a little white space between my title and my text. Okay. Now we're going to start getting into sections. Now a section is just a piece of a word file where we're changing uh, formatting, margins, columns, things like that. Um, so again we're dividing up our word file into little pieces here with sections. One thing I want to show you here down in your um, place down here at the bottom, your status bar, I'm going to right click down here near my, near my word count, like so. I'm going to cl click on this section up here so I can see which section that I'm in. So here you can see I'm on section one, page one of one. All right. So that's how you would be able to see your sections. Really helpful, especially if you have a document with multiple sections in it. Okay. So my insertion point is right after the article. I'm going to hit enter. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be diving into a multiple column document at this point. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that I'm uh, selecting a break because I'm going from a one column document to a multiple column document. I need to tell Word, hey, things are changing here right now. So up on my layout tab, I'm going to say breaks. And I want to do what's called a continuous section break. Is essentially putting a divider line and saying, hey, everything before this is going to be one column. Everything after it is going to look a little bit different. So I put in that uh, continuous section break. Okay. Then I want to come up here and select my columns. I'm going to say I want to do, whoops, let's get my insertion point back down there. Columns of three. Okay. So I'm going to end up with three columns. Again, my ruler is already selected. Okay. I'm going to have three unique columns in my particular document. Okay. It's also helpful to turn on justification. I'm going to go to my home tab. On the project, for some reason, they didn't ask you to do that. I'm kind of looking ahead here to what you're going to be working on. I just see I've got an extra space there. All right. Um, if you're going to do newspaper columns, you want to have an, obviously, you're going to have a nice straight left margin. You also want to have a nice straight right margin, so I'm going to come down here to justify and select that. So you'll see that as I format this document that it will align the text accordingly to match the right margin of the text. I'm going to be start typing some stuff here, so I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so I typed some information about avoiding malware infections. I typed all that out. I'm going to hit enter to start a new paragraph. 
except this time I'm going to bring in some information externally into my document. I'm going to say insert up here and over in the right in my text group I'm going to say objects. Okay. I'm going to say text from file. I'm going to go out and find my chapter 7 stuff, the supplemental files for this particular chapter, and I'm pulling that file from something called avoid malware infection. Now it's going to pull in all of the text from that Word document, and as you can see that was a lot of text, and I'm glad I didn't have to type that in there. That's very nice. I'm going to change my view now so I can see multiple pages of my newsletter. Okay. All right. Moving right along. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to my layout tab. I want to make my columns just a little bit narrower. So I'm going to come down here to columns and more columns. Actually, I want to have them wider. I'm going to make them 2.1 inches wide, currently 2 inches wide allow a little bit more text on the page and, and less space between my columns. Okay. Next I want to create hyphenation which means if I have multiple paragraphed words in my paragraph, multiple <laughs> syllabus, syllable words in my document, they will hyphenate, maybe make my document just a little bit shorter. So I can come up here to hyphenation and turn it on to automatic. You can see uh, my document squeezed down just a little bit there based on the text I just created and um, have that hyphenation in there. Next we have this thing called the drop cap. I'm going to change my zoom just a little bit. I don't need to have that much zoom there. I'm going to go to the first line of my document like so. And something called a drop cap, which you've probably seen in books before, and here we can get, again, have emphasis on the beginning of either this newsletter or the beginning of a paragraph if we're doing a longer document. I'm going to come over here to Insert. And over here in my text group, I have Add a Drop Cap. I'm just going to click on Dropped. And as you can see, the first letter of my document becomes very large. And again, we call that a Drop Cap. All right, And I'm going to run my mouse pointer through that Drop Cap and I'm going to go to my home tab. I could also go to my mini toolbar, which I probably just had up just a second ago. Drop down arrow next to font. The purple accent 5, darker 25%. Ninth color, fifth row. There you go. So we change that drop cap color so it matches the rest of my document. Okay. All right. And from here I'm going to position my mouse pointer right in front of that pop-up windows header down there. And I'm going to go to my layout tab and breaks. And here I'm going to insert what's called a next page section break. So here I'm doing a page break and I'm creating another section. All right. So I'm going to click on next page. And here now you can see my text cut off there on my first page. Here's a second page of my newsletter. And we're good to go. I bring my mouse pointer down here to just in front of that next page section break. Okay, I'm going to hit enter twice to create a blank line. Hit the up arrow to go back to that blank line. Um, I'm going to click on my home tab and clear all formatting just to make sure I don't have like a header here or something like that. So I just have regular text. Um, I'm going to hit control R to align my text to the right side of that particular column. Okay, turn on italics, also known as control I, which we should know by now. And parentheses, I'm going to say article continues, spell that right, continues on next page. Okay, just let the reader know where they're going next. Okay, I'm going to go down to that paragraph mark next to my next page section break. Now, here I want to balance my columns. All right, so I'm going to go to my layout tab. I'm going to click on breaks, and here I'm going to do a column break. You're going to see the effect of that when I select column break. And it takes me back up to the, I got, no, actually, it was not the end of the column. It's going to send me to the top of the third column. 
Basically, I'm saying I'm done with this second column. Now go up to the third column. Okay, get my insertion point up to that point in the top of the third column after I've done my column break. I'm going to say insert. Over here, I'm going to go over to my objects area. I'm going to say text from files. I'm going to pull in this file called text tech tips announcements and drop it in as the content of my third column. Then I'm going to hit Shift F5. Like, what in the world is that? Shift, function key 5, takes me back up to my editing, my previous editing position in that third column. Okay, next we're going to pull in a text box. I'm going to have it still on my insert tab up here. And we're going to use a text box in a newsletter to kind of highlight or give focus to some particular text in the document. You'll see this in newspapers a lot, where they pull something out of the article to get your eyes to focus on that article and maybe say, hey, that looks kind of interesting. I want to read more. So I'm going to do the simple quote. Let's go find simple quote here in our list. Make sure I didn't just blast past it. Simple text box. And we're going to come down here to simple quote. All right. And I'm going to drag it up just a little bit here and over kind of in the middle of that position there. Okay, so the text I want to highlight in my article is down here in the software area. And I'm going to highlight this text which says some software they where Tata is offering malware protection actually installs more malware. And you've probably seen that. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go up to my control in my text box and paste that in there. That looks really weird. Oh my goodness. Drop down arrow. I'm going to say I want to merge formatting. In other words, bring that text in with the same formatting that's in the text box. Okay, let's change the first letter of that to capital S, backspace, capital S. Triple click on that to select all of the text. It is currently Century Schoolbook. That's good. I'm going to change it to a font size of 11, a little bit smaller. Okay. And I'm going to select out so the text box is still selected, but just click off the edge there. Now we're going to do some resizing. And this often involves actually, let's move, I'm going to move this over first, like so but also resize it considerably using my handles. I'm going to drag this right wall so it's over a little bit. I need to click right on the edge of that. It's not liking that at all, is it? It just wants to move. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to drag the size, get the sizing handle on the bottom right hand corner and drag up like so. So it's kind of bridging those two columns like so. Very nice. Of course, then the instructions say verify that the size is changing the value up here. I'm going to be on my drawing tools format tab, changing the height to 1.85. It's doing exactly like they say, the width to 1.4. Okay. All right, and I'm going to select that text box, come up here to my shape styles, and I'm going to select this color fill purple accent five. Okay, all right, and then we have a very nice looking text box. I think, I think I'm going to save this now and call this segment two. Just want to make sure I don't lose anything here, so we'll continue on to section three here in a segment three here in a moment.